Trading sex for fish is a common problem in the Lake Victoria region of Kenya. Environmental issues on the lake, such as pollution and the destruction of the wetlands, has caused catches to diminish and competition to speed up. With fish in high demand, the men selling it have the upper hand and can therefore insist on sex for fish in addition to money. This practice is called jaboya. The impoverished women, often trying to provide for their children, have no other option than to comply. Fighting for basic survival, the community places no importance in protecting the lake. If this wasn't bad enough, this vicious cycle also leads to the further spread of HIV in an area where the rate of infection is already sky high. That's why we decided that we are going to pilot an initiative, which is called No Sex for Fish. This is JB Okeo, the director of the Victoria Institute of Environment and Development. It's a local grassroots organization whose main goal is to involve people in nature conservation. They came up with the No Sex for Fish project two years ago when they realized that the locals were not able to protect the environment because they already had bigger problems in their own lives. People who are subjected to the, the Jaboya practice do not see the need to conserve the natural resources like fisheries, especially if they are already selling their bodies. So it's very difficult to get them together to say, look, our resources are being depleted. Since fish are in short supply, the men can choose who they sell it to. This leaves the women with no choice. Some that do not have sex with the men do not get fish or do not get enough fish. Without access to fish, women and children suffer from hunger and malnutrition. The region also has some of the highest rates of HIV AIDS in all of East Africa. The women we are dealing with here, over 90% of them are widowed. Their husbands have died of HIV AIDS. People who practice jaboya often have unprotected sex, continuing the spread of the disease. To tackle all of these problems at once, the Institute came up with a simple solution, empower women. The No Sex for Fish project donates local women fishing boats. Instead of being dependent on the fishermen, they can now have the fishermen work for them. By improving a woman's livelihood, the hope is she will now be able to participate in the environmental conservation. Agnes is one of the women given a boat. Her life has changed significantly. Does that mean that she had to have sex with the fishermen in order to get the fish? Yes. She's now the employer, and the fishermen work for her. When the men return from the lake, she's the one selling the fish, calling the shots, making sure no one is exploited. She's now making more money than the men, up to 3,000 Kenyan shillings a day. Does she feel empowered? Does she feel that she, you know, can step on this beach and have authority uh, and respect from the men? And it is a maximum respect that I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> because I have my own things to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they really respect me mm -hmm. as a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, After spending time with Agnes, we thought we were done with the story. At the last minute, Dan, our guide and local researcher working with the Institute, invited us out on a fishing trip to give us perspective on how the fishermen live. So right now we're in the canals uh, headed to Lake Victoria. Uh, we're following a crew of fishermen. Uh, this crew is managed by Agnes. She's actually the owner of the boat. The traditional boats have no safety features and accidents are common. We also have some aquatic lives like the hippopotamus. You know, when Aipo fights itself under this boat, it will turn it, mm. and that is also very risky. There's hippos here. Yeah, so many hippos around here. Interesting. So many, yeah. So, and, like right now, a hippo could come and capsize this boat. Like right now. These men live hard lives of physical labor with little hope for change. All fishing is done by rowing. It takes four men to manage the heavy nets. The fishermen work in day and night shifts, utilizing the boat to the maximum. The average lifespan of a fisherman is 45 to 55 years old. 
Frederick Cotillano has been a fisherman for 12 years. Do you like it? I like it. My people can't sleep hungry. They get fed up through me, through going to fish. But it's a hard job. It's not easy. Very, very hard. The catch that we've just brought on from the water approximately can round up up to 500. And that's for all of you guys to split? All of us, plus the owner of the boat. I might get around 50 shillings. Given their already tough living circumstances, we were certain some of the men would be opposed to the No Sex for Fish project. Even JB has been surprised by their response. We realized that the men really embrace this uh, new initiative. It's good. <coughs> That's why we're inviting the men. You see us laughing together. Nobody's ill about anyone. Yeah. We're happy about it. We asked Frederick, what is it like having a woman as a boss? It's something normal. Even a child, a small child can be my boss because he has money. <laughs> ah, they, they are the best managers. Right. They do not have to Despite how unjust the Jaboya practice is, spending time with the fishermen helped us to understand them better. We were curious to hear more from their side of the issue. Both sex and Jaboya are still huge taboos and never discussed publicly. But miraculously, Dan found a fisherman named Eric willing to go on camera to talk to us about it. Hey, Eric sees the Jaboya practice as a trade between equal partners. Why not use more money? Why not give it to the woman that has the most cash? So basically, the women that are the most vulnerable, these are the women that they are often exploiting. Eric tells us that he is aware of the dangers of HIV. Is he practicing safe sex? Surprisingly, Eric also confirms that none of the men resent the women for participating in no sex for fish. It seems that for these fishermen, business comes first. And does he have any interest in working for one of the female boat owners? After talking to Eric, we realized just how complex Jaboya really is. Ending it requires understanding the local culture and customs. That's why activists from the community like Dan and JB are key in providing innovative solutions. We now have 60 women owning boats and benefiting from it. But the impact is even greater when you include the women's children and the men that work for them. After just two years of operation, the program is starting to reach their long-term goals. We now see a lot more women engaging in environmental conservation. More women are now beginning to talk about um, the need to conserve, the need to protect the fisheries resources. No Sex for Fish also brings hope to AIDS prevention as these women dare to speak openly about the Jaboya practice. We have a new change of attitude towards how to handle HIV and AIDS. With all these wonderful results, no one is happier about the project than Agnes.